everybody and welcome back to another supersize eBay sales items that sold for a hundred dollars or more. The sales in this video came from my Facebook group where every Monday we have a thread where sellers can post what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, how much it sold for, and some interesting information so we can all learn from each other. So thanks to everybody who posts on Money Making Mondays. This is going to be kind of a long video. There's about 40 items in this video. So it's really informative and a great way to learn what to look for because these items are all around you. It's just a matter of knowing them when you see them. And this is a situation where knowledge really is power because the more you know the more money you can make and just a quick side note somebody asked me the other day when I was planning to retire <laughs> and I was like um, never because you can do this forever until you are no longer physically able to do it in fact, I have students in the premium library that are in their 70s and 80s because they have an accumulation of decades, a lifetime of items that they want to sell. They don't want to cycle all of their possessions down to their children and grandchildren. And in a lot of cases, the children and grandchildren don't want the items anyway. So. This really is something that you can do no matter what age you are. You can make money either full-time or part-time with eBay working as little or as much as you want. So in my opinion, this is never going away because reselling has been around as long as humans have been around. It's just not something new. It's just the technology of it has changed in the last two or three decades with being able to do it online. So all this stuff is out there. It's just a matter of recognizing it and being willing to take the risk to buy it and then resell it on eBay. So all of that being said, we are going to start with Ken McNamara, who has an honorable mention here with this antique teddy bear. Five dollars at a thrift store sold for $93.71, sold in 124 days. He said, could not verify if this was a vintage Stife or another brand. Had a lot of interest and questions from potential buyers that I was not able to answer. So this is a great example of he just did the best he could. He gave the information that he had, and sometimes that's all you can do. Because you don't know the complete history of something, especially if you find it in a thrift store or at a garage sale, all you can do is explain what you have, what you're looking at, so the buyer will know what you have, and sometimes good enough is just good enough for eBay. So he sold this for $93.71. And then we have Rosalinda, who did sell a vintage Stife. She said it sold in six days. I got this Stife Pelican at the Goodwill bins for 50 cents. Took an offer of $95 with free shipping. And this is something that I look for in the plush. I don't necessarily dig through and look at every single one, but I do have a few that I look for that are high dollar. So if you don't know what Stife is, I have a video about that. It's from 2016, but it's evergreen. The history of the company is not going to change, so the information is still relevant, and I have a link to that video below this video and right up here in the card so you can learn about what Stife is and start looking for that if you are not already. Okay, we have another honorable mention with Kim Smith, paid $12.99 at Goodwill, listed less than six months. These are Allen Edmonds wingtip men's shoes that sold for $95. And there is some commentary here that is 
worth noting. Rachel says, one of my very first sales back in 2002 was a pair of wingtip dress shoes by Floorshine, sold for around this price. eBay was so good back then when people got into bidding wars. I think my first month really hooked me. I sold so many things from yard sales and thrift stores that I got dirt cheap for really good money. Of course, it's still good today, but just a little different with higher shipping and fees and mostly buy it nows, along with higher thrift store prices. Like I said, still good today, but those were the good old days to me. And I can completely relate. Everything back then was auctions, and there was just so much more excitement because there weren't as many sellers. And eBay was in its infancy and just getting started. So a lot of things were different. If you started back in the early, early days, you basically took your pictures and had to go get them developed and then scan them in on your scanner before you could, before you could actually list an item. And then we started using the SD cards. You take your pictures on a camera, stick your SD card in the computer, and I remember handwriting addresses on packages. We couldn't even print labels yet, so as many glitches and problems as eBay has today, it is miles ahead of where it was when it started back in 96. So. Some of you long timers, I would love your comments about some of the things we had to work through in the good old days because it is so different now. Okay, moving on. And I'm sorry, there's like a crackling noise. I have changed my location because the microphone is so sensitive. It's picking up something in the background. So sorry about that. Okay, now we have Shannon Matson. She said, back last May, I found a 16-piece set of Japanese dinnerware for $25 for everything at Goodwill, not too long after the lockdown reopening. Finally listed them. Sold two listings in 24 hours for $100 each. Three more to go. And look at this picture. <laughs> this is a 10-inch round vegetable bowl by Muirfield. From Japan and that just doesn't even look like anything super expensive it, it almost looks like hey did a three-year-old make this at nursery school <laughs> um, it doesn't look super artistic it just looks kind of weird but anyway look how valuable it is it sold for a hundred dollars 99.95 and she's got more of it to sell so this is Another example of don't judge a book by its cover because some of these things that you would not dream could possibly be this expensive will shock you. Ken McNamara is back with a refrigerator filter. Paid $4 for this, sold for $99 found at a thrift store, sold in five hours. Kenmore Ultimate 2 Refrigerator Filter Replacement Cartridge. And I included this as an honorable mention because anything like this new in the package right now, we are in February of 2021, could be a profitable and fast seller. Production is down everywhere because of COVID. Factories have closed. Things are on back order. We still haven't gotten back to normal yet. And some of these types of items that are, I call them utilitarian, they're not real exciting. They're not really beautiful, but people need them. Batteries, light bulbs, computer components, any kind of consumable or replenishable or household type item that could be hard to find. I just went through this when I moved. I ordered furniture and some of it was on back order for three months because factories have shut down completely. So 
I think COVID has forced us to change our game plan to kind of zig instead of zag because everything has changed. The clothing market completely changed in 2020. People weren't going anywhere. They didn't have to dress up to go to work. They're staying at home in their athletic clothing or their pajamas or they're buying outdoor wear to get outside and do things. So we've all had to shift. And if you're doing the exact same thing you were doing this time last year and it's not working anymore, you might want to rethink that. Look at what are people buying? What do they need? What's hard to get? And that's what you want to look for when you're out in thrift stores, in addition to collectibles and things that people buy all the time, regardless of the economy. Okay, moving on. We've got Rosanna Smoker. Picked up this fan at Goodwill for $6.99. It took about four months to sell for full price of $99.99 plus shipping. This is vintage wall decor hanging fan. Beautiful item. And one more note about COVID and home items. Since people are home, they're working on their homes. They are making them more beautiful. They are redecorating. So these kind of things are selling well because when you're stuck at home and you're looking at the same thing every day, sometimes it is an emotional lift to change some things, make it prettier, make it more comfortable. So just keep that in mind. All right, Graham Murray bought two of these from Goodwill for $15 each. This one sold in a couple of weeks. This is an AccuQuilt Go fabric cutter starter set and it sold for $99.99. He paid $15. So another item that is keeping somebody busy at home while we are still dealing with this COVID issue. Kim Smith paid $8.65 at Goodwill in June. Buyer is wearing this fabulous dress to a wedding. This is a black tie made by Hero Industries silk sequin dress sold for a hundred dollars and she paid eight dollars and sixty five cents. Lauren asked if it is vintage and Kim said yes it was. Very pretty. Okay Holly Feger. Small 11 inch side table for a chair purchased at Goodwill for $6.99. Originally picked it up to see if I could use it and then I saw it was for a specific type of chair checked comps and was worth more than I realized. Listed for $125, accepted best offer for $105, sold in five days. And this is a swing table that you hook onto a chair, $6.99, and she sold it for $105. Next is Julie Gambino. Purchased at Goodwill for $2.50. Took about 10 months. Sold for best offer of $105. Rare NAO by Yadro Victorian Shoe. This is a ceramic or porcelain item. Yadro is quite expensive and collectible. $2.50. Sold for $105. Now we have Margie De Molina. Paid $3 at Goodwill for Vintage Bucilla Christmas Stocking Kit. Sold for offer of $110 plus shipping in three months and after Christmas. So this was in February. Christmas sells all year. Especially these kits because if someone's going to make it to use for next Christmas, they need time to do that. So this was $3 and... It sold for $110. Joyce Rule. This vintage and rusty auto parts cabinet was in my neighbor's front yard with a free scrap metal sign. Funny thing is he sells old car stuff on eBay. Took about six weeks to sell. Two of these with best offer added. 
This is a metal auto parts storage cabinets, wheel bearings, garage old advertising. So Rachel said, now that's funny. Surprises me he didn't think it would be worth anything. And Joyce said, yes, possibly because of its very rusty patina. Maybe it was beneath his standards or something. I don't know. It was also sizable, so not an easy ship like some things. That's what I was thinking. Maybe he just didn't want to fool with shipping it, so just tossed it out. And that's the interesting part of eBay is not everything appeals to everyone for whatever reason. You know, oh, I don't want to ship that. That looks too complicated or that's breakable and I'm scared to ship that because I don't want to deal with having to file a claim. Or um, in my case, I'm allergic to rabbit hair. So I can't bring anything into my house that has rabbit hair in it, which um, when I'm in a thrift store, I automatically know if I am approaching a sweater or a vest or a jacket with rabbit hair because I just start sneezing, my eyes start watering, and I just have like my own internal rabbit hair radar. <laughs> um, but you know, everybody has different reasons for why they sell or don't sell certain things, which is why this works. Because here's an example of this guy's trash was her treasure and she sold it for $113. Next up is Jenny Payan. She paid $7 at Goodwill, sold within a few hours. Dell D6000 Universal Docking Station, $115. Now this is an example of a computer component that maybe the person tried to buy it directly from Dell and it was on back order. Maybe it's older and they don't make it anymore. Last year, in about April, I guess, 2020, I was looking into getting a new laptop, um, Apple MacBook. And I went on the site and put in my order, like what I wanted. I needed some more memory, like sort of an upgrade of what I'm using now. And it was on back order for like three months. So I just said, forget it. I'll just use the one I have and do the best I can. But that's what's happening with all kinds of industries when people need something and they go to order it from the supplier or manufacturer, the wait's too long. Like they need it right now. So they're going to eBay to buy it. So here's another example of that. $7 sold for $115 within a few hours. So that tells me there's a demand for this item if somebody paid this much for it and it sold so quickly. Next up is Jessica Ogle. Bought for $2.50, took a month to sell, had it at $129.99, got a reasonable offer of $120, and of course accepted. This is rare, vintage, 90% full fragrance, $2.50 sold for $120 in just a month. Okay, now we have Annette Miller. Picked up a tub of Legos at my local thrift store. Outdoor sale for $0.25. Cents. I heard Lego minifigs do well, and I could see they had quite a few of them in that tub. I threw these up for auction because I had no clue what they were worth. My auction had 64 watchers and ended yesterday. So this sold for $123, a lot of 33 Lego minifigs that she only paid 25 cents for. And this is why we do eBay, right? Next up is Myra, purchased for $30 at an estate sale and took best offer of $100 after one week. Wish they had been my size. These are some floral Doc Martens shoes. $30 and took a best offer of $100. Now we have Robin Parsons. Vintage Halston perfumed bath powder. She says, love these old stock cosmetics. She didn't say how much she paid, but it sold for $125. 
Halston Perfumed Bath Powder. Okay, next is Susan Thompson. This was something my husband picked up for $10. It took two months to sell and I took best offer of $125 plus shipping. Vintage mid-century decanter blue glass made in Italy. $10 and sold for $125. <laughs> and those are so pretty. I would love to find something like that. Next up is Graham Murray. Paid $20 from a thrift store sold in about three weeks. This is a Ninja 3-in-1 slow cooking system sold for $125. And now we have Janae Brookins, paid $3 at Goodwill, sold in two weeks. This is a vintage RoboCut complete hair cutting system, $129, and she paid $3 for it. And this is another one of those doing it at home kind of things to avoid being out in the world around COVID. More people cutting their own hair. Tammy Mitchell purchased on Facebook for $10. Took a couple of weeks to sell. Sold for $129.96 plus shipping. This is a new American Girl Samantha Craft Kit. $10, sold for $129.96. Here's another one of those replenishable items. Mary Lonzak paid $20 for two HP ink cartridges. Sold them both to the same buyer for $138 plus shipping in a couple of days. So these are some ink cartridges. And Sheila Bennett said, ink is hard to get lately. I searched for several months for ink for my printer, and once I found it, I purchased a couple of extra cartridges. The stores said they have a hard time getting it in and keeping it supplied due to the pandemic and so many working from home. Very true. Okay, now we have Annette White. After just over a year of reselling on eBay, I finally made over $100 profit on an item. Paid $20, profit was $104.75. This is a Jujube changing pad. It's like a diaper bag changing pad type thing. Sold for $139. So congratulations on your $100 sale, Annette, and for sticking with eBay because a lot of people quit in their first year. It's too overwhelming. They don't see results fast enough, and eBay really is a marathon, not a sprint. So I commend you for sticking with it because those big sales are out there. It's just a matter of learning the system, and if you list it, they will come. Margaret Curbs paid $15 at an estate sale, sold in approximately three months for $140, and she got there in one piece. Vintage mid-century ceramic lady dancing with tambourine table lamp, and that just screams mid-century modern. Beautiful piece. $15 and sold for $140. Now we have Jenny Baum. Paid $3.99 at a thrift store, sold in one day. Laura Ashley, extra, extra small, vintage 80s floral tea dress. $3.99, sold for $140. <laughs> That's just amazing. I had a dress like that, and we did wear them to teas. So, wow, that makes me sound old, but that's what she did back then. Okay, Ken McNamara with some pots and pans. Paid $20, sold for $149. Found the set at a thrift store, sold in 33 days. Remember Mervyn's Department Store? This was originally sold there. And yes, I do remember Mervyn's Department Store. Vintage RK Real Kitchen Stainless Steel Copper Bottom Cookware. And there's some valuable conversation here. Rachel says, those are beautiful. I like the look of them. And Shauna said, can you share what you use to make these so shiny and new? 
And for a minute, I thought Ken was going to say his wife, because <laughs> he's mentioned that she helps him clean the pots and pans. But he did not say that. He said, barkeeper's friend in liquid formula for the light duty and powder formula with damp scouring pad for the really dirty ones. And yes, his stuff always looks so shiny and new. And Ken, I'm going to hand it to you. I tried some pots and pans, and I'm just not cut out for all that scrubbing and cleaning. So that's something I'm going to leave behind in thrift stores because that's just not my thing. And that's okay. You are the expert. So I commend you on all of your uh, pots and pans listings and sales because they always look beautiful. Moving on to Melissa Napier Utley. She paid $7.99 at Goodwill, sold for full asking price in three days. These are Fisher, Skate, Ski Boot, Cross Country. I guess they can be used with several different activities. They're like a versatile boot. Sold for $149.99. She only paid eight bucks. Now, Dawn McMaster paid $40 for this set because I knew it would be a good flip. I took best offer of $150. Vintage lingerie is one of my specialties, and I never get tired of selling it. This is an Olga bombshell sexy nightgown penwa set. $40, and it sold for $150. And there's some conversation here that might help you if you are learning vintage lingerie. Lauren said, what about shapeless satin like nightgowns? I have a garbage bag full, but can't imagine they're worth listing. And Dawn, you get a gold star for your answer. Vintage lingerie nightgowns, bras, slips in general are good sellers. Just remember presentation is everything. With good pictures and descriptions, you can sell anything. Don't prejudge what you have. Put them up and see how they do. And that is always the litmus test. If you don't know, try it and see what happens. Sometimes history is the best predictor of a future event. That's why we look at completed sold listings for pricing. But if you can't find enough information or there's not enough comps, then it doesn't hurt to try it. The worst thing that can happen is it won't sell. And then you'll know and you can move on. So don't be afraid to list items that you're not sure of. And I have seen Dawn answering questions in the Facebook group about vintage lingerie. She helped me with a few things last year. So uh, I really appreciate that, Dawn, that you are there to answer our questions and everybody else, too, that contributes and participates because everybody has different specialties. Nobody can know everything. And there's so much more knowledge when you come together as a community than you could ever have as one person. Okay, moving on to Louis Prizzy, who always has interesting items. He said, this was sitting in my death pile, paid about $4 for it at the thrift, sold for full asking price in about a week. This is Codename Kids Next Door, lot of 23 action figures. They look like little miniatures, and they sold for $174.95, and he only paid Four dollars, And this is just fascinating to me. I want to learn more about these itty bitty toys because you'll see these in the thrift store in little bags and you've got Littlest Pet Shop, you've got Lego minifigs, you've got all these, uh, you know, Polly Pocket, all these little bitty toys and they're worth so much money, which is just mind blowing to me. They're just plastic. They're not made of diamonds or gold or silver. It's plastic, but it's become a collectible. Kim Womack, $0 for this item, sold for $175 in a week. Downsizing embroidery stash, so it was free to me. This item is used in machine embroidery, so it's a software package for 
an embroidery machine. She had it. She sold it for $175. Okay, Chris Marie has one of those funky mid-century modern clocks. Bought at a yard sale for $4, took a week to sell, took best offer of $210. Mid-century modern Lux Atomic Starburst Clock, 1963, and it works. This is on my bolo list. I always look for these. One day I'm going to find one, but huge profit on these Atomic Starburst Clocks. Next up is REL. Pinky and Blue Boy paid $5 for the pair at an estate auction. Took about three weeks to sell. This is a vintage set of framed prints, sold for $215.95. And I know I've seen these somewhere in my life. Somebody had them in their house, maybe multiple people, maybe an aunt or a neighbor, but I know I've seen these uh, Blue Boy and Pinky it comes as a set. So $5 for the pair and sold for $215.95. So now we're getting up into the heavy hitters. Brittany Chade bought at Goodwill for $15, had a small chip on each ear, but no other flaws. Originally listed for $495, sold for $400 about a year later. Ceramic Bengal Tiger statue figurine, $15, sold for $400. And Ginger asked why, no, not Ginger, Dawn asked why it was so valuable, and Brittany said, no idea. There were others similar, but none exactly like it. All were going for several hundred dollars. So this was found at a Goodwill. So all you people that think that Goodwill is pulling everything and you're not going to find anything because they're putting everything online, I know I say this in every video, but they can't possibly catch everything. That's our job. That's our challenge is to find what they missed that's still worth money. And most of the people in this video are finding things at thrift stores. So you just got to change your mindset if that's what you think. Like, I'm never going to find anything. If that's what you put out into the world, that's what you're going to get. But that's why I do these videos is to show everybody that this is available to you. If you go out into the world with the mindset that you're going to find these things, then you will. So just don't listen to all the hype about Goodwill's putting everything online. Yeah, they're putting a lot of things online. But are they selling all of them? No. How do you know they don't just say, okay, this stuff's been online a year. Let's put it back out in the store for a dollar and get rid of it. Um, there's just no way they can catch everything that comes through the door. So that's what we're for. <laughs> that's what resellers do is, is we have the challenge of what they didn't recognize or what they didn't notice or what they didn't price too high. Okay, Chris Marie again bought at a yard sale for $15, took six months to sell for full asking price. Vitamix Blender sold for $429.99. 15 bucks at a yard sale. I love it. Now we've got Cy Enst. Is that your real name? That sounds like a play on words. These people on Facebook that make up funny names just kill me. <laughs> I'll think it's their real name and it's like, no, that's a play on words. Okay, got on Facebook Marketplace for $45. Sold for $450 plus shipping in a few weeks. This is a uh, Tiffany table lamp with an African theme with elephants and giraffes and different animals. And Myra asked if it was just the shade and the seller said no, it was the full lamp for 45 bucks on Facebook Marketplace and sold it for 10 times that in just a few weeks. And then we have my favorite sale simply because it's about donuts. <laughs> Megan DeYoung found on Facebook Marketplace back in the fall for 
The owner was moving to New York City to work at the new Krispy Kreme facility up there. I had many lowball offers, but finally got a full price offer from a Japanese buyer. It's on its way to a freight forwarder now. It sold for $500, and she paid $50. If you don't know what a freight forwarder is, it's a company that sends the item on to the final buyer in another country. So a lot of them are located in California, right there on the coast, and they work with Asian clients, different Asian countries that are looking for specific items. So when you get a request to write the item number on the outside of the package or something like that, it could be a freight forwarder because they're not even going to open it they are going to send that package on to the final buyer, usually in another country. So you can Google freight forwarder if you want to know more about that, but that does happen on eBay. It's not somebody scamming you. They are doing a service for the final buyer who does not live in the United States. Okay, and then we have Jess Ellerby with her best flip yet. Bought at Goodwill for $5.99, took a few months to sell. Christian Laboutin Spike Sock Donna Shoes. So these are sneakers. They're spiky sneakers. $550. And Jess says, I literally almost fell over when I spotted them. They were so ugly, I had to look at them and then look them up. Retail for $1,300. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And there was some more conversation about which thrift store she found them at. She actually lives in Metro Atlanta. And I knew which thrift store she was talking about. And it wasn't one in a super affluent neighborhood. It wasn't in Buckhead. It wasn't near downtown Atlanta. It wasn't near West Paces Ferry, where a lot of the old Atlanta money is. It was just out in the suburbs at the store where other sellers commented that, like, they never find anything good there. We couldn't believe that she found them at that store. So that's another example of, you know, just keep your radar open. You don't know what's going to show up in front of you. These things are out there and people are finding them. Okay, finally, the first place winner in this video is Courtney Van Doren paid $12.50 for a lot of three of these in an estate auction, had a hunch, sold within an hour of posting, ridiculous bolo, what a blessing. Look up comps on absolutely everything you come across. And the item is... Scream Mask Fantastic Faces, pink ghost. It sold for $850. And she only paid $12.50 for three of these. So what about $4? And it sold for $850 within an hour. That is called living the eBay life. This could happen to you. So keep your radar open. Think positive and you will find these things. Okay, that wraps up this edition of Supersize eBay Sales. Stay positive, look at everything, and keep posting on the group. I appreciate everybody who shares their sales and information because it's a great place for everybody to learn and to be more successful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day on eBay. Bye.